so welcome back in this video we're going to actually get started on writing that um, API using the Express.js so what I have here is simply a blank folder I named it API authentication and I also did navigate to it using my um, commander in the windows so as you can see I'll prove that it is indeed empty <laughs> and now we need to get started so what we first of all need to do is to create that package um, the JSON file that will hold all of our project based settings as well as a list of dependencies that we're going to be using for this project so I'm going to type npm in it like this and then we'll simply need to answer a few questions so for the package name it will use my folders name so I'm fine with that version I'll also leave it like this description I, I'll not change that entry point I'm going to put in app.js task command nothing git nothing will do it ourselves keywords author I'll put code worker uh, license doesn't matter and I'll say yes that looks okay now if we come here we'll see that it generated that file and we can see it over here okay so now let's install some dependencies so to get started let's install express JS for our minimalistic Node.js based um, server. Let's then install Morgan for being able to see in our commander like all the requests and response as they happen. And we will also install body parser so that we are able to parse the body that gets sent from the clients. So those three. Now I'm going to be using yarn for the remainder of this series but you can use npm if you're accustomed to it the only difference really is that I'm going to type yarn add and then all of these and you would type npm install dash dash save and then all of this so you can choose whichever you prefer so let's add them now with that out of the way let's actually start on by creating that app.js entry file so I'm going to create a new file I'm going to call it app.js and now let's wire things up in here so what we need to do first is to actually get a handle on those three dependencies that we just installed so I'm going to type const express equals require and then the express I'm also going to type const uh, morgan equals require morgan and I'm also going to type const body parser equals require dot body parser like this okay next we need to instantiate a new express.js application so we'll call it app that's usually the convention and we're going to simply execute this express as a function so now this app over here is actually an instance of the express.js next we will need to set up some uh, middlewares over here then we'll need to load up our routes over here and then we'll pretty much need to kick the things off and actually start the server over here so let's actually start the server first of all because these two will get worked on as we move along so to start the server uh, we need first to define a port so we can do it nicely or we can just put it inside of that listen function but let's do things nicely so we'll create a separate variable that will hold the port number and then what will happen is first of all we're going to check whether the environment variable called port actually exists and if so we want to use the number contained in that but if such a variable isn't available then we want simply to use the number that we specify here so we're going to type process.env for environment and then the variable name so if it exists use that but otherwise simply use whichever number we put here and we're going to use the 3000 now in reality this variable won't really exist on our machines right now so we are going to pretty much specify the port using this number but if you ever deploy this to say Amazon or somewhere else you can specify the environment variables and that way you can simply communicate back and forth using that 
hosting say site interface to actually specify the port without needing to change the actual code inside of here so that and what we need to do next is simply go app.listen and then say the the variable which contains the port number and now what we can do it is we can uh, write something like console.log and maybe we want to write server listening at and then the port number like this by the way i'm using that um, template literals in the es6 and that's how you can put some actual javascript inside of otherwise string literals like this with this done we can actually just try to start the server and simply make sure that everything is running as it should be at this point so let us do that so i'm going to navigate back to this directory and then i'm going simply to type node app.js and this is pretty much what we want to see so that just means that the server is able to run and that's all that's important at this point okay and while we are here let's also wire up um, those two middlewares specifically the morgan and the body parser one so we're going to go here and type app.use so essentially what we're saying is um okay let me first of all write this and then i'll explain so we're going to type app.use and then we want to use that morgan and to use this morgan you need to specify uh, to pass this morgan's function uh, what type of output of like the format you want to be seeing inside of your terminal so we're going to go with the option called dev but you can of course um, just go to the github page of morgan and there are like a few different options i believe combined is another one but to make things simple for now we're just going to go with the dev and next we're going to use the body parser now in using the body parser we want to specify that the body parser should really parse the json so we're going to put it to call the function called json on the body parser like this and with that out of the way it's done now pretty much what is happening here is inside of an express when we later on create some routes so when the request for any route um, comes in these middlewares over here will, will get run in sequence so what will happen is the request will start over let's say here and then before it hits the actual route it will first of all invoke this morgan so we'll be able to see it inside of here and then it will also invoke this body parser and that way the express.js will parse the body for us so by the time that request actually hits the, our controllers and whatnot we'll be able to actually access that body values that the client sent to the server so that's just a quick like thing i wanted to let you know in case you weren't aware but all of that will become much clearer as time goes on okay so now we need to get started on these routes so to do that we don't want really to pollute this app.js with with uh, hundreds of lines of code but instead we want to maybe do a bit of organization over here so for those reasons let us create two different folders one is going to be called routes and another one is going to be called controllers like this now i want both of them to be at the top level and what we want to do is in this example we are just really focusing on the user authentication so we are just going to have something like let's say um http slash slash localhost 3000 in this example and we want to have slash users so we want to have pretty much like this and we're going to have a couple of endpoints over here so we'll we will have sign sign up we will have sign in and we will have some say secret endpoint that will only be accessible if the user is authenticated so with knowing that let us actually go on and create users.js file in this folder and users.js file in this folder as well so new file um, users.js and new file users.js here as well okay
Now inside of this user.js file inside of the routes folder, what we need to do is first of all get again a handle on the express. Next we want to get a handle on a router that is inside of that express object. So we'll say express.router like this. And what we want to do is to simply create some placeholders for now. So we will say router.route and then we want to route on the sign up. Okay, and then we we will have a post uh, method here. So what we want is whenever client hits that route, namely the localhost 3000 slash user slash sign up with a post HTTP method, then we want something to happen. So we'll simply for now say post and then what we need to do is to specify the, the function that will be contained inside of this users.js inside of this controllers folder. So before we do that, let's actually import it. So we'll say something like const users controller equals require. And then we need to navigate back one directory and then there is controllers folder and then there is slash users like this. So for now, let's pretend that we have a function there called, let's say sign up, let's keep things consistent. Next, we'll also have router.route and now we, we will have a sign in route and we will also expect a post HTTP method there. So again, we're going to say users controller dot sign in this time like this. Okay, and like I told you, let's also have um, router.route route, and let's say, let's have something like slash secrets. But this time we don't want post, we just want to be able to get that secret resource. So we're going to say get and let's say users controller dot secret, something like this. Okay, but now we need to create them inside of these controllers. But before we do that, actually, we need to export this router. Otherwise, we will not be able to access this inside of our entry file called app.js. So what we need to do is go module.exports equals router like this. And now we can actually go on in this controllers folder and actually start working on it. So we're going to have a couple of uh, functions in here. So let us define the module.exports at the top of the file and simply create them inside of that object. So to get started off, let's, let's simply do that. So we will have a sign up function as if you remember over here, dot sign up. So sign up is going to be async request response next. And then we simply need to create a fetter of function for that. And now we need to try and catch um, blocks. Uh, but as you can see, writing these try catch blocks will get pretty old pretty quickly because we'll need to repeat that for all of them. So what we're going to do is we're not going to use this router that is exported by Express, but instead we're going to use an alternative that is called Express dash promise dash router, which automatically wraps these functions inside of a try catch. And that's really good because we then don't need to write them. So something like this is what that dependency will do for us. And this will be our code pretty much. And then it will simply like encompass our code with all of that. So to do that, let's first of all install that dependency. So I'm going to type PR and add and it is called express dash promise dash router like this. Okay, and now we need to make use of it over here. So let me type const router equals require and then express promise router and then we need to invoke that function straight away. So now we can get rid of this. Okay, and now we can also get rid of this try catch. And for now, we don't want really to focus on 
any of these functions in particular. We just want to make to make sure everything is wired up correctly so that moving on we can focus on bits and pieces. So over here I'm just going to simply go console.log and let's say um, users controller dot sign up called pretty much something like this and now I'm going to make duplicates of that and I'll simply change the naming so this is going to be sign in and this one is going to be the secret one the secret and I'll also change it over here okay and now this file looks good this file also looks good so we're using those function in but we need to somehow include it inside of our app.js file so to do that let us come here be below this comment and i'll simply type app.use and now we want to tag something on this route and this route is going to be slash users so whatever we write over here is going to be pretty much like glued to this let's say section of our site slash users so if we include this file here that means that all of these routes slash sign up slash sign in and slash secret will get behind these slash users so let me write require and then um, in the same folder there is routes folder and then there is users file so now let us see if this will work. So I'll come here and I'll restart the server. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to use Postman to make some requests to our server to see whether we actually see these comments. And I have it opened already over here. I'll leave a link in description so you can download it. So what we want to do is we want to send um, actually a post request because this is a post, but we won't send anything inside of a body. So we're going to say HTTP slash localhost uh, 3000 slash and then users and then sign up. And let's see what happens. Okay, great. So as you can see, this hangs because we're not responding back to the client so it is still kind of waiting for the response but that's not important as we were really interested to see this so as you can see the correct function inside of a controller got called as it should be so now let me cancel that request and let's simply check if the same happens for the sign in hopefully yes and as you can see that happens and now let me also cancel this but now let's test this get request to the slash secret so get slash secret and that's also called so great so right now we have a uh, basic functionality in and in the next video what we need to do is to come to this user's controller once again and to pretty much like replace this placeholder with the actual functions that will do something for us this is it for this video, so we just laid out the foundation for videos to come. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something and thank you very much for watching. If you have any feedback, please leave below in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.